from the Banditos MC in the United States to the Satan Slaves MC in the United Kingdom, biker clubs are known for some of the most vicious gang wars and run-ins with law enforcement agencies. But also in the land down under, where pristine beaches stretch alongside swaying palm trees, these rough guys have left their mark. Away from the idyllic surfing spots, Australia offers another world, the criminal underworld where these biker clubs rule and instill fear and leave trails of terror everywhere they go. From drug trafficking, cold blood murders, robbery with violence and other criminal activities, these biker clubs have carved their identities into Australia's darkest pages of history. Today, we look at some of Australia's most dangerous biker clubs, but be aware this story is not for the faint of heart. Igniting chaos, the rise of dangerous biker clubs in Australia. Biker clubs in Australia trace their origin to the early 1960s when the Gladiators MC was formed in Maitland, the home of Speedway. It is not clear how this outlaw biker club gained its name, nor who the founder is. This is because the club has managed to maintain a high level of secrecy and protect such details from leaking to the public. But this club is not related in any way to the Gladiators MC biker clubs in the United States and Norway. As is the norm with other biker clubs, the Gladiators have also been involved in various criminal activities where its members were either arrested or imprisoned for possessing prohibited weapons without a permit. In 2012, the club's Maitland Chapter's president, Frank Vander Croft, took himself to Cessnock Hospital after he was shot four times to the torso. A burnt-out car was also located nearby and is believed to be related to Croft's shooting. Later, the Gladiators opened other chapters in Grafton and Gunnada. The biker club scene in Australia changed in 1966 when William George Jock Ross founded the Comanchero Motorcycle Club. The biker club's name was inspired by John Wayne's 1961 film, The Comancheros. Ross ran the club in a military style and even gave himself the grandiose title Supreme Commander to affirm his power and control over the biker club. Over time, the biker club gained popularity and its membership rose significantly. Comancheros also became involved in numerous conflicts with other biker clubs, as we will see later in the video. In 1969, Clint Jacks founded the Rebels MC, initially known as the Confederates, in Brisbane, Queensland. As is the norm with the criminal underworld where these biker clubs thrive, Rebels MC has also been involved in several criminal activities, from murder charges against its members to drug and firearm charges. At its peak, the biker club had about 70 chapters and more than 1,000 members countrywide. But of course, the notorious Hells Angels and Outlaws MC, two of the most ruthless biker organizations out there, have spread their tentacles into the land down under. Established in Australia in the 1970s, these biker clubs have also been on the radar of law enforcement agencies for suspicion of engaging in criminal activities. In the 1980s, Anthony Mark Spencer, also known as Snodgrass, founded Banditos MC. With the establishment of Banditos, three of the big four American outlaw MCs were now represented in the country. In recent years, other foreign biker clubs have also established chapters in Australia, the most famous being the Mongols. Conflicts are bound to happen with such a high number of dangerous biker clubs in Australia. Biker clubs members, donned leather jackets, patches and tattoos, engage in serious conflicts with their rivals. Is it the yellow and red color-themed Comanchero Biker Club under the current leadership of Bamiri Sarasevic? Or is it the red and gold-themed Banditos under the leadership of Big Tony Vartiainen? These two clubs didn't shy away from a head-on confrontation. Let's have a look at the most deadly conflicts. Keep it here as we reveal the atrocities these biker clubs have engaged in. Who rules the biker club world? Comanchero versus the Banditos. The Comanchero have been engaged in a long-running conflict with a rival biker club, the Banditos. The violent feud between these biker clubs started in 1984 and was majorly caused by the two rivals' desire for dominance and to gain recognition as the undisputed leader among the other biker clubs in Australia. On August 9, 1984, three Comanchero members were attacked and beaten up by their Banditos rivals at the Bull and Bush Hotel, and this is considered the official start of the war between these two clubs. In what seemed like a gentleman's agreement between the Ross-led Comanchero and the Spencer-led Banditos, 
There was an agreement that no fights would take place in a public place or at the homes of members, an agreement that none of the sides honored. Contrary to reality, Ross strongly believed that the banditos feared him. With an inflated ego, he started scheming how he would use force and brutality to win the biker war. Ross identified an opportune moment he felt he would use to his advantage to establish control in the biker universe. On the 2nd of September 1984, Ross instructed his members to arm themselves with knives, shotguns, rifles, and baseball bats as they attended a swap meet hosted by the British Motorcycle Club of Sydney at the parking lot of the Viking Tavern in Milpera, Sydney. This directive was because Ross was confident that the banditos would be attending the meet, and that could serve as a good moment to execute an ambush against an unprepared banditos. Although the banditos arrived at the meet at a time later than Ross had anticipated, a war broke out at the parking lot, and at the end of it, seven people had lost their lives in the crossfire. These were four Comancheros, two banditos, and an innocent civilian. Ross also took a bullet hit on the brain and a shrapnel in his chest, but later survived. Later, 43 men from the two biker clubs were charged with murder, and Ross was charged with constructive first-degree murder, meaning that although he might not have killed anyone, he was responsible for ordering his gang members to kill others. He would later receive a life sentence in 1986. In 1989, he appealed his conviction, and in 1992, an appeal court ruled in his favor, and his conviction was reduced from murder to manslaughter. On December 7, 1989, Ross was released from prison on parole, but this did not mark the end of the Comanchero Bandidos conflicts in recent times. After the Milpera massacre, there was a period of truce where the two biker clubs did not engage in wars. However, this changed in 2007 after more than 60 Nomads biker club members from the Parramatta and Granville chapters shifted their loyalty to banditos. The reason for this conflict was that the Nomads were initially associated with the Comancheros. In what seemed to be an act of vengeance for betrayal, cases of drive-by shootings and fire bombings were reported. The conflict caught the attention of the government authorities, who launched an operation known as Operation Ranmore, which resulted in the arrests of 344 people affiliated with the two biker clubs. The conflict between the Comanchero and the Bandidos has resulted in all damage, bloodshed, and no good. Yet, no club has claimed its rightful position as the ultimate leader of the criminal underworld of biker clubs in Australia. Perhaps another player in this world of biker clubs might be more aggressive and unleash more horror than the Comanchero and the Banditos. Let us now look at a biker club that started in the United States before finding its way into the land down under. The Hells Angels, bringing American bikers terror to Australia's backyard. Wednesday, March 17, 1948, Otto Friedley started the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club in Fontana, California, the United States. 27 years later, this biker club opened chapters in Melbourne and Sydney in Australia. Despite the strict laws prohibiting these biker clubs, this has not stopped the Hells Angels from growing exponentially, with the current membership standing at about 250 members and 14 chapters throughout Australia. Over the years, the Hells Angels have been associated with a raft of criminal activities, such as drug production and trafficking, armed robbery, prostitution, arms trafficking and murder throughout Australia. However, in an effort to conceal its shady practices, this biker club has attempted to move into legitimate businesses such as tattoo parlors, gyms, security firms, and haulage companies. Yet, police authorities claim that this biker club uses these methods to launder its ill-gotten proceeds from illegal practices that it engages in frequently. This chapter is also notorious for intimidating its business competitors as a measure of retaining dominance in the business areas it has ventured into. The Hells Angels have also established partnerships and alliances with other outlawed biker clubs, such as the Immortals, the Coffin Cheaters, Satan Soldiers, Vikings, and the Red Devils. In the usual violence-oriented nature of biker clubs, the Hells Angels have also been involved in numerous conflicts with rival biker gangs. In March 2009, members of the Hells Angels were involved in a clash with the Comancheros while on a flight from Melbourne to Sydney, a fight that resulted in the death of one member of the Comancheros Biker Club. 
In the true definition of biker clubs, the Hells Angels have continued to unleash untold horror and misery everywhere their Harley Davidsons and choppers take them. Outro biker clubs have continued to cause mayhem in the Australian underworld. Despite efforts to curb their influence and stop their activities by the government, 